Hello and welcome to the Data Art series of webinars on trends, technology and thought leadership. During today's webinar, titled Three Ways to Improve the Travel Payment Experience, together with our partner Stripe, we will focus on the real stories of advanced payments and subscriptions usage from market leaders and we will learn from your peers, such as The Parking Spot and Inspirato. Please welcome our moderator, Alex Shedrin, Vice President of Travel, Transportation, Hospitality, Data Art. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I would like you to meet our guests, uh, Ron Rich, uh, Sam Schulte, and James Lemon. Hey, everyone. Our guests, thank you for choosing to join us today. I want to first ask you and invite you to share your questions and comments throughout this presentation. We may or may not be able to address all of them during the stream. However, uh, because it's on LinkedIn platform, we will be able to address them after the webinar. So please do not hesitate to post your questions or comments. We are really looking forward to your feedback. I would like to start uh, with a brief story. I was um, on a business trip to New York a couple of weeks ago, and I was uh, on an Uber heading to the hotel, and I just pulled up my phone, and within 30 seconds, I was checked in in the hotel. I had my digital key on the way, and I was able to skip the front desk, walk into my room, drop off my bag, and head over to dinner. And when I had to check out, I also could easily skip my uh, checkout process and just check out from the phone. And that's the seamless self-service experience that was delightful and new and very well implemented. I want to invite our guests, um, Ron, and Sam, and James, to share your delightful experiences in travel as we, as we start on, the, on this webinar as an as a initial introduction. Yeah, like I'm I'm happy to go happy to go first if that's if that's useful. Or do you want to shoot over to Ron? Uh, please go ahead, James. Yeah, so I, I we I had a family holiday for three weeks in San Francisco this summer, which was amazing. And uh, I like to go for a run in the mornings. I was about five kilometers away from our hotel, and I realized I was just completely out of energy. Maybe too many IPAs the night before. And I again pulled out my phone, and I realized through my Lyft app, I could actually rent a bike kind of 10 meters away from me. So I grabbed this electric bike and was five minutes back from the hotel. And I just couldn't believe that these two partners had just figured out how to create kind of seamless tech when I was using a, a kind of payment method registered in London, kind of thousands of miles away. I do have to say, I was also down in Spain recently and a hotel emailed me and asked me to email them raw credit card details, a photo of my credit card and a photo of my ID. So we're not there yet, but great to see there's some uh, interesting innovators in the space. That's a great story. Thank you, James. Glad, glad it worked out with the bike. Uh, Sam, do you do you, do you want to want to go ahead with your story? Yeah, thanks, Alex. And uh, it's, it's good to get uh, Alex and, and James's uh, uh, perspectives uh, on, on their recent experiences. Mine is a little uh, a little less technology focused. Interesting, considering the role I'm in. But uh, uh, I was on a, um, a family vacation uh, with my wife and my two boys uh, back in June, and uh, it had to have been a fluke because we don't travel as much, you know, personally. So I don't have necessarily like status with different airlines, but we were flying American airlines uh, for one particular leg of this trip. And the four of us just randomly got um, upgraded for really no reason. I like zero status with American. And I, it's just like, I, it's interesting. I was, I told the story to my brother who has, you know, fairly high status with American. He's like, I don't understand how they even did that. Like, why, like, they're just like, was there a drawing and you just have to win? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. Cause, um, so I have two young kids and they think, you know, now that they've flown first class ones, that that's what they want to do. You keep, you know, going forward. So that, that's fun, but it was definitely a great surprise and delight moment. This is great. Wrong. Yeah, so <clears throat> mine is highly technology focused, but Sam, it sounds like your kids really enjoyed the first class, so maybe you should just bring forward in the future. Um, I was in Austin actually for uh, National Parking Association, which is a convention um, that gets hosted in different cities each year. And 
Austin is a very tech forward city. Um, but I went out for you know a morning walk and then I went and got breakfast and water and coffee and I realized I didn't have my phone or my wallet. Um, and I was actually able to pay with my watch because I had that on. Um, so you know we've talked about it quite a bit at the parking spot, but you know actually doing it in real life was actually pretty cool. That's great. Thank you everyone for sharing. And I would like to um, first uh, ask you to give a quick um, overview of your companies and uh, what you do and the profiles of your customers that will help our audience get uh, familiar with what the parking spot and Sperado and Stripe do. And also give you a little bit more of an introduction of your role and uh, what you do for the customers. And with that, uh, Ron, why don't you kick us off? Sure. So I'm Ron, uh, nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm the chief information officer at the parking spot. So I oversee our software development, our um, product team and our infrastructure team, which also consists of networking and security. Um, and the parking spot is a near airport parking company. Um, we're the largest of our, of our type of company in the industry. And we're really uh, an origination-based company, so uh, people aren't parking with us when they land at their destination city. They're, uh, you know, starting out with us. So we're really the first people that they interact with along the travel chain. Um, and our focus is really greatly on hospitality um, and making it comfortable, affordable, and easy for our customers to, you know, park with us and make sure that they're feeling safe that they're parking with us and that their car will be safe while they're gone. Um, we were founded in 1998. Um, and right now we're up to 38 locations uh, at 22 airports, and we have over 75,000 spaces um, nationwide and growing um, as we speak. Um, our amenities are kind of what sets us apart from most in the industry. Um, you know, we have continuous shuttle service. We give bottles of water out to all of our customers on their exit. Um, you know, we've got all the different parking types covered, uh, valet, um, it's not at every single location. Um, and we also have uncovered um, at most of our locations as well. Um, over the years, we've done a big push on technology and something that really stood out to our customers and us um, is our mobile app and the mobility portion of what our customers are able to use. Um, so now we have um, a mobile app that's fully, and Alex, you can go to the next slide. We have a mobile app that's fully integrated with all of our systems um, that kind of brought all of them together. Um, you know, it's it's our frictionless experience where, you know, customers can scan in. Um, they've got all of their loyalty information. They've got all of the information connected to their account, including a credit card, um, through our fast exit feature. Um, and the the mobile app is really what powers our leisure and business customers because our buckets are kind of two uh, separate. Our business uh, or executive people what we call them, um, usually are through a managed program um, that our sales team and business development teams forms. Um, we've got partners uh, like AAA, um, and then also we've got leisure people who you know are one to two years per year traveling. So we've had to appeal to all of those different types of groups um, while we were developing all this technology, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more later. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate this overview. I just also want to add that I am a frequent customer of the parking spot. I am here in DFW, and um, I appreciate having a mobile app and just showing a QR code and entering as it makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, Sam, uh, could you give us an interview, uh, an overview of Inspirata, please? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Alex, and uh, nice to be here. And um, uh, happy to be part of this event. Uh, really excited about it. Um, so my name is Sam Schulte, uh, Vice President of Product Management at uh, Inspirato. Um, and, um, you know, just to, to kind of cover the more kind of the quick legal disclosure, if you will, we're recently a public company, Inspirato. So, um, you know, everything that you know, I'll talk about here is in kind of the public domain. So just kind of covering our basis there. Um, so just give you a, a high level of, of you know what Inspirato is. So uh, we're a um, you know we're a luxury travel and hospitality company uh, providing access to hand selected vacation options um, paired with world class service, all delivered through a subscription model. Um, and from a kind of just a you know a, a missions standpoint, you know it's 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 really our in our core DNA to to deliver 
you know, these luxury travel experiences with service and certainty um, to, you know, kind of take, you know, any of the, the worry or the guests work out of our customers kind of minds and just make that, that process and that experience as seamless as possible. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. Uh, so in, in terms of, you know, how, you know, what, what our kind of the subscription model is, I mean, you know, essentially we've, 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 you know, through the course of our, our, our 10 years of company, we, you know, we became a company in 2010. Um, you know, we've looked at really providing luxury travel through this next generation subscription platform. And so kind of thinking about that and looking at it through the lens of brands and, and, you know, uh, industries across, you know, sort of the travel spectrum that most people are aware of, you know, we, we are sort of, you know, the one that's really leading and out front in this subscription travel offering, you know, and we've, thinking about in terms of our offering and what we do and comparing it to some of the other kind of brands from a marketplace and OTA standpoint, this is sort of how we position and see ourselves as, you know, providing these exceptional vacations, um, you know, and, and really that, that, that value stream for our customers that um, we think really sets us apart. Um, next slide. So, you know, what does that mean? What does that look like? So, you know, essentially we have two primary subscription uh, offerings. We call one club and one pass. And, and that's sort of how you get access to the portfolio. And the portfolio is the same for, for both of these options that's consistent of, you know, almost now um, 500 uh, private homes or residences, as well as over, you know, up to 400 plus uh, hotel and resort partners and custom experiences as well. And, and we do that through really end to end white glove service, um, you know, really, you know, providing that, that, that high touch feel that our customers tend to expect, um, you know, you know, really driving inspiration through that entire uh, travel experience. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate this introduction. James, coming over to you. Uh, you are global lead for travel at Stripe. You enable and observe many travel and hospitality companies uh, using Stripe platform. I'm sure a lot of the folks joining us today are very familiar with Stripe. Um, I think it would be helpful to get a little bit of an insight and perspective of what you observe at Stripe specifically related to travel and hospitality and um, what type of um, customers and use cases you're addressing. Yeah, happy to. And th thanks for having us, Alex. And Sam, I've got to say, you're, you're definitely making me feel like I need a holiday now as the, the cold London winter nights are drawing in. Um, yeah, look, I mean, before we kind of jump into this, I think what, what I'd say for those that don't know Stripe too well is that we're, we're kind of 10, 11 years old now uh, with the exciting mission to blow the grow the global GDP of the internet. And what that means is, uh, you know, people often know us for kind of frictionless, easy to get started with kind of payment solutions for online platforms. But actually behind the scenes, we're running a lot of the financial infrastructure, um, frankly, 75 of the world's top 100 marketplaces, but also right across the travel industry. So a lot of the big hotel chains, car rental companies, vacation rental companies, attractions and experiences businesses, plus kind of software and, and platform businesses turn to Stripe to get you know, great experiences in front of their customers to build kind of secure uh, backbones where they can move money around quickly. And of course, kind of get paid and make sure people are, are paid out as well. So um, always excited to, to talk about it. I, I'm just nine months into the business. My background is actually hospitality. So I had 15 years in hotels and travel tech and startups, including kind of the short stay industry. So uh, so definitely kind of know my way around um, some of the challenges that we face and potentially some of the opportunities we've, we've got as well. Um, but yeah, you, you asked me to dive into this. So we, we, we've, we've probably, you know, we, we've signed well over, you know, we've signed hundreds of travel customers this year. But I think three things have really come up from those kind of C-suite conversations time and again. Um, one is, is really rethinking resiliency. So absolutely been beaten to death on the challenges of the last few years in, in travel. You know, whoever thought we would be kind of locked down as a as a population and a race, but certainly as a as, as an industry. So I think people are trying to think, well, look, actually, 
things might be more volatile in the future. And maybe I expressed huge innovation two years ago. Maybe actually we panicked and put our heads in the sand. But whatever I, I dealt with, I realized that my, my team and my tech and my business are going to need to be able to move a little bit faster in the future. So we're, we're kind of helping people through um, some of those things, often behind the scenes, actually, thinking about productivity, thinking about security, um, but most importantly, thinking about kind of keeping the business going um, in, a, in an agile and, and secure way. Personalized experiences always comes up. You know, guest expectations have massively changed over the last three years as people have been pushed, of, of all demographics, people have been pushed to a, a digital first experience. You know, I'm expecting to um, you know, reserve and book and maybe even pay for a wide range of experiences you know, before I get them now. Um, that could be, yeah, yeah, we're obviously used to booking cabs in advance, but if I just want a day out or um, I want to go and visit a friend, I'm often booking everything um, online and, and that's never been more, more true in, in travel with it. A huge race, race to mobile. But battling for that direct booking, battling for that conversion um, at checkout is, is more intense than ever. As you have the giants of you know, the online travel agencies with their phenomenal e-commerce budgets, really making minnows of those people providing travel. Hey, we, we spend so long curating that traveler experience, that guest experience. You know, we've often let perhaps e-commerce, you know, fighting for direct booking be a bit of an afterthought. So we're seeing companies go, well, actually, maybe I could get hold of the technology that the giants are using and can I kind of plug it into my own systems? And, and that's really helping them engage with the guests, not just the first time, but time and time again, you know, remember me, remember my preferences and put in front of me the options that you know that I want. So we see we see a, a lot of that. And then lastly, no surprise is, is loyalty. And I love the subscription example at Inspirato, but it's really like, how do we reward people who show that loyalty to our brand, who choose our brand again and again? How do we make sure that we become the natural choice for them every time, whether it be their airport parking, their car rental, their vacation rental? Um, and so we're seeing some really interesting trends in that space. Um, and we'll definitely be talking a little bit more about that. If I just jump forward to really kind of where Stripe fits into that very, very broad picture, um, there's if just on the next slide there's really kind of three areas of the guest uh, really three three areas that people are kind of turning to us one is to build that better guest experience you know you want to grab the online booking well you need a first class website where people can check out in one click with the payment method of their choice and we're seeing a lot of innovation around google pay apple pay buy now pay later like why not give them the options that they want especially if you're targeting you know generation z who just want to sit on their sofa and in one click check out in the same way they would on on a fashion site um but behind the scenes we balance that with safety and security making sure that people kind of yeah it, it, it works and and you don't lose any money um we're seeing lots of new revenue opportunities which is great you know i take the hotels example you, you wind back three or four years there's probably an unhealthy healthy obsession, uh, myopically thinking about rooms revenue. And now we're seeing much more of a total approach to revenue management, to real estate management, and people thinking about um, you know, their, their meeting space, their restaurants, their, their maybe even setting up a, a, um, you know, an online store. Obviously, thinking about food delivery. Like when did we ever see hotels do food delivery before? All these different ways that we can really monetize the asset, the team that we've got, um, and, and, and often trying stuff. You know, you won't get it right first time, but you know, being with a partner that can help you get going in minutes and hours is is definitely the way to to innovate. And then, as I've mentioned, kind of really operational efficiencies. I think everyone's trying to run a little bit leaner. So looking at those teams that maybe at the end of the month are spending hours on reconciliations or or, or intense debates with partners around commission payments, fee collection. Well, trying to get money running as smooth as data between partners is really Stripe specialism. So we try and make sure we sit um, you know, with kind of connected accounts so people can see one view of the thousands of bookings or transactions that have run through. And that kind of speeds up everything behind the scenes, just meaning you can run a much smoother ship and frankly, focus on your guest experience, which is what it's all about. So I'll just kind of dive into Stripe on a page really in the, in the travel industry. So as I say, on the last page here, you, you won't see us necessarily um, for front and foremost in front of guests, but we'll often be right behind the scenes um, running the platforms. So running people like a, a hotel property management system, running that point of sale in the restaurant, that'll be Stripe behind the scenes, enabling a smoother guest experience. And then behind the scenes, making sure money ends up in the right pockets of partners and franchisees and you know 
portfolio owners and, 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 and that kind of thing. So, so payments is our core. You see here, if you kind of look on the bottom right, but actually what's really exciting as you kind of go up through the layers is we've got a whole range of business solutions and, and products. So we are helping businesses start with subscriptions. We're helping people um, you know, connect together thousands of franchisees within a hotel chain to get one view of the data, to get one view of the customer. Um, we're helping people with omni-channel, you know, obviously booking in advance, maybe making that deposit, but then checking out once you get to your restaurant or hotel. Um, and then much, much longer conversation we've got time for here for platforms. We're really helping people get into the world of fintech. We're helping people potentially give loans, issue credit cards and all of that kind of fun stuff as well. So it's a, a, whole, a whole world. We're, we're just getting started. Um, it's really exciting to be so deep in the travel industry and would love to trigger lots of exciting conversations off the back of some of these ideas. But over, over to you, Alex. Thank you, James. That was a great overview of uh, the Stripe offering and also the trends and themes that we see uh, throughout travel and hospitality. The uh, conversation today, um, as we see the customer experience specifically in travel and hospitality, will be structured around the experience of the first time customers, the repeat customers, what happens after the purchase and the role of technology and innovation in this process. So that brings me to our first theme, which is the first time customer. And uh, obviously with um, Inspirato and the parking spot and James, what, what are you observing from the industry? There's different types of approaches and the different level of abstraction or the le different level of uh, handholding or interactional service that customers require based on the, uh, the type of the purchase that they're doing, their demographic, um, so I'd like to start with you, Sam, to uh, talk about the customer journey and the type of customers that you have and what the first purchase looks like uh, with Inspirado. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, so, you know, with, with our business, um, in terms of kind of how the, the conversation starts and the sort of first interactions that we have with prospective customers, um, you know, like many com companies, we are you know, constantly looking at and evolving our, our kind of advertising campaigns and strategy to reach the, the core folks in our demographic, which, you know, is, is, is folks that are, are more high net worth individuals, you know, that are, that have, you know, sort of the, the, the travel budgets on the leisure side that, you know, you know, it aligns with sort of, um, you know, our offering. And so that's, that's really where, you know, it's, it, it, it kind of starts in terms of ultimately getting, um, you know, reaching people in those demographics and, and driving them and giving getting attention to Inspirato, who we are, the, the value proposition we have, the differentiators that we think we, we have in the, in the marketplace so that we can ultimately get to the point where we're having a conversation with that protect, uh, potential prospect and our, our very talented sales organization to, to really be able to walk through kind of the offerings that Inspirato has, why we think, again, we're different and why we, you know, have invested so much time, energy and effort into this um, experience for our prospects. So it, it is a, a multi-step process. And so um, slightly different than maybe some, you know, fully, you know, um, kind of, you um, self-service models from a sales perspective, we, we do want to spend time with our prospects. We want to kind of walk them through not what we think, but also connect them with, with folks that are already have, you know, experienced the Inspirato and what we have to offer. And so we can really help guide uh, the customer through that buying decision that ultimately leads to that first transaction that you're talking about, Alex, where, you know, the transaction is sort of the logistical aspect of it. We, we make that as seamless and easily easy as possible. And once, once that happens, then, you know, our, our, you know, our intent is to get, you know, the, the customer then kind of fully uh, engulfed into the Inspirato experience, understand kind of, again, what we offer. And so that we can really get them excited about ultimately planning and booking their first trip. And, and would it be right to say that the this experience happens from a variety of channels? Uh, with uh, you, um, obviously, you have your website, you have, you have your uh, team that from which people can inter interact via phone call or uh, email. Uh, how 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 is this communication handled? I'm assuming there's more than one uh, conversation that uh, positions your guests for success of using Inspirato. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Alex. It's a great question. I'd say, you know, it's our intention to, to meet, you know, whether it's a prospect or a customer, you know, where they're most comfortable, right? And so we we have a, a, a lot of different ways in which we can be communicating and interacting with our customer, whether it's, you know, if it's if you want to talk to somebody on the phone, some people still like doing that. Um, so we, we make sure we can do that or, or you know, our, our sales team is, is always uh, accessible. Um, and uh, we really, um, from kind of that first touch point, we want to make it as personalized as possible. So Alex, if you're considering, you know, um, you know, joining Inspirato, you know, we're, we're going to want to be talking with you and we're going to make sure that however you want to interact with us, we can, we can facilitate that. So whether that's on the phone, whether that's via text, whether that's email, or it's a combination of it, or maybe even, you know, connecting you with like a local event that we might be having in the Dallas area, which we do that. Um, so you can kind of see firsthand and experience Inspirato and connect with other people. So, um, you know, we really try and provide um, sort of multi-channel um, kind of communications around, you know, really introducing and educating, you know, our, pro our prospects around Inspirato so that once you make that decision, you're very comfortable with kind of what you're what you're really investing in, in terms of that, again, going back to our mission statement around that level of service and certainty that we will be providing from that point forward. This is great. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Ron, can you talk about how uh, the first time purchase happens with the parking spot? Sure, sure. <clears throat> so uh, we the the best experience that we provide our customers is really through the loyalty program. Um, you know, going back to James' point of personalization, it's very key in our business, especially coming back to the two different buckets of, you know, user categories that we have or customer categories that we have. Um, but we've optimized our website over the years and our digital platforms for that matter. So app and website to um, make it very, very easy for the customer to sign up uh, during the reservations flow or booking flow. Um, you know, it's a step along the way um, that we can enter them into the loyalty program uh, because then their uh, experience at the property and when they're pulling in and the transactional experience is a lot more seamless. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about frictionless earlier and they literally just have to use one QR code and they're, everything is stored with that account. Um, we've also um, did a big push with our loyalty program on the website um, to make it much easier to manage your account. Um, we've also in introduced a tiered program. Um, so uh, repeat customers and uh, customers who park with us often um, you know, they can get into a higher tier, which actually gives them better perks. Um, we've got a, you know, a standard gold and platinum level. Um, and the platinum level actually gets uh, some of our free uh, or free upgrades to some of our uh, best services, like a uh, premium parking at some of our properties. Um, so getting them into that loyalty program is really probably the most important. Um, and also the uh, revenue management system that we've uh, developed over the years of, you know, using our forecasts and uh, reservations and um, demand, our forecast to demand, uh, we can provide the best price to the customers on our website. Um, and that's typically through the pay now reservations, um, but pay later also gets, um, you know, discounts as well. And then obviously people in our executive program, the business side, um, we usually have an agreement with their companies to make us the preferred parking vendor um, and provide them with a discount in order to do so. But they also earn points um, as they spend as well. Um, so yes, over the past couple of years, we've done a big push towards eliminating friction on all fronts, um, you know, at our properties, on our digital products. Um, and quite frankly, in our operational products as well, um, you know, we have the, a pretty complex shuttle tracker that um, our customers and employees all use. Um, our customers can see where their shuttles are. They can request a pickup. Um, so the first the first time experience really is uh, unique for the customer. And I think that that's what keeps them coming back um, because of the amount of technology we put in. Thank you, Ron. I think it also helps that uh, your shuttles are very recognizable at the airports. I know every time I land at DFW, I, I usually see a parking spot uh, shuttle and the same with the other airports. Uh, I'm sure you uh, see multiple in that market, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. James, um, anything to add on this topic of first-time purchases, making it frictionless, making it easier for the customers to get familiar with the new brand? 
Yeah, I mean, I'll just make a couple of quick points. I think firstly, and the point's been made in, in, in the industry before, but there is a war on for that first customer purchase, right? You know, you, you'd be very lucky to for customers to be forced to book with you, whether you're an airline, vacation rental, hotel company, parking space. You know, so that direct booking experience has got to be the heart of your commercial strategy. And obviously you're talking about a world of content, but you're also talking about, look, what is it that the Airbnbs and Expedias do so well to make sure that customers, once they've, once they've made their choice, are, are hooked and then they're, they're booked and they're confirmed, they're, they feel confident in, in one or two clicks. And that for me is really, is really the heart of everyone's kind of, kind of commercial, commercial plan. My, my vision for the industry is absolutely someone should be able to book their whole trip like that, you know, from airline to hotel to parking spot and then sign up for an Inspirato subscription off the back of it. You know, we, we need to start thinking about these kind of super apps, but I, I know it's definitely a vision that, that, that is a few years away. I, I think one organization that, um, uh, you know, it, it is a Stripe partner, but, but that does it really well is, is Trip Actions. So, you know, a, a disruptive kind of travel management company in, in the business travel space. Um, and they they are really smart the way they work. So they, they, they provide corporates with virtual cards. So that means you can just go onto their app and straight away you can just book your, you know, your flight, your hotel, and it all um, completely bypasses the traveler. And it all gets dealt with by your travel department and your finance teams. It's just, it's just really slick. Um, if you are booking hotels, what they've done is they've aggregated all the old school kind of business travel content from kind of the GDSs, but they've complemented it with all the OTA content you were probably going to go and check anyway as a traveler, like your Expedias and, and, your, and your booking.coms, which is neat. And if you want to pay at the hotel, well, you know, that that kind of virtual card model doesn't work. So you can actually just load up your own card. It could be a personal card, could be a corporate card. And I think that's 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 pretty cool as well. So I think we're kind of you can see glimmers of hope where you can have one system with all the content, multiple payment options. Um, so I, I can see how we're getting there, but I think it's a, it's a long journey for the industry that's going to involve much deeper partnerships, you know, much more um, kind of digital thinking around how customers really really want to book. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's an exciting time, um, but yeah, winning that first customer purchase. Yeah, this is not a debate about whether you should book on OTAs or book direct. That's a whole different conversation. But everyone is out there to win that customer purchase. So you've got to ask yourself the question: you know, why why me? Why why should they book with me? Thank you. And also removing the friction throughout this whole journey in the process so yep. that uh, it goes as smoothly as it can go um, in this. So after the first purchase, we have a good, the customer experience, the program, uh, the products makes it easier for them to understand uh, what the purchase will be next time. Uh, in the case of the parking spot uh, or the case with uh, Inspirato, there's a membership. Um, in one case, it's a spot club. In another case, it's either, either a pass, uh, Inspirato pass or Inspirato club. Um, Ron, could you talk to uh, what happens with the repeat purchase purchases and what opportunities and um, um, what makes it easier for customers to book again and uh, be, uh, stay at the parking spot the next time? <clears throat> yep. Um, so for uh, on the digital flat platforms, obviously, uh, you know, when the members logged in, we save all of the information that they had from their previous trip. So they can make a booking very easy at their preferred, preferred facility uh, for their preferred parking type. And also uh, part of the repeat is, you know, uh, the loyalty aspect of, you know, earning points for um, parking or towards free parking that you can, you know, so the, the way that you get that is staying with us more often. Um, but, you know, the fact that everything is linked to their one account um, and we don't have multiple, even through our third party um uh, reservation platforms that we're integrated into, it all comes up to their one account and we've kind of aggregated everything into that um, to make it as easy as possible for the customers to enter and exit and quite frankly, rebook um, because we know what all of their preferences are because um, they told us that. Um, we also have uh, expense integrations with all the major expense providers um, to make that process very, very easy after they've stayed with us. So they just, they check out, they get their emailed receipt, and then it goes automatically to their expense provider. Um, you know, and like I, I said before, we've tailored our experience to the, the loyalty members um, because that's who we know the most about. Um, and that's who, you know, is telling us about them. 
Um, from a reservations perspective, though, we've seen our uh, reservation rates, uh, the percentages of overall transactions close to 70 percent, um, which just four years ago it was only at about 40 or I'm sorry, three years ago it was only at about 40 percent. So we've gotten a, a lot of uh, traction on our digital platforms, and I think that's due to the improvements that we've made, but also, uh, you know, customers really wanting to ensure that they actually have a parking space available or that we have one available for them and knowing that they're getting their best rate by doing it online. How are you helping customers find out about the busy time? So I'm assuming Thanksgiving oh, will be a busy, busy, busy time for you. Um, and this having this the space available and booking it in advance, do you do any active outreach to your customers or we do. helping we them got, realize the discounts? Yeah, we've got a pretty uh, substantial email campaign that goes out to all of our uh, members or members that we have email addresses for that told us that they can that we can email them. Um, and we we do a lot of push. It's funny you bring up Thanksgiving, Alex, because that's one of the biggest pushes that we do to try and get people to, you know, reserve and book early in advance. Uh, because we do have a tendency to fill up. Obviously, it's the biggest travel holiday of the year. Um, you know, it's not like the end of year holidays where they're more spread out. It's Christmas or Thanksgiving is, you know, consolidated into well one week. <laughs> um, but yes, we do. We use social media quite a bit um, to get that message out there. Um, and we also uh, rely on our SEO and SEM campaigns and the digital marketing uh, to bring the customers to us sooner um, and remarketing campaigns to uh, ensure that they know that by booking earlier, they're getting a better rate um, and, you know, can upgrade to parking types for a lower rate, um, you know, instead of waiting to the last minute when we can't guarantee a space. Great. Thank you. Sam, uh, my question to you is about the difference between the club membership and Inspirado Pass. You have two subscription products. Um, can you talk about the type of experience uh, that um, is and, and the perspective that the customers have who are members and who are uh, pass holders? Yeah, happy to. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, and, and Alex, what you're mentioning too, is we, we have two primary subscriptions in, 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 the, in the marketplace today, one called Inspirado Club and one called Inspirado Pass. And, you know, those, those offerings are, you know, slightly, uh, have, have a slightly different structure, but ultimately yield and, and provide access to this, the same uh, level of service as well as accommodations within the portfolio. So, the, you know, the kind of the, the way to think about it is, is our, our club offering is, is, is something that, you know, is, a, is, is geared towards uh, travelers that, that may be more kind of episodic in nature in the way they travel. So they, they may be on a slightly more regimented schedule, whether that's, you know, they have a family and they're typically traveling during times when folks with tra families travel, whether it's, you know, during Thanksgiving, as, you know, Ron, you were mentioning earlier, is, um, you know, over the holiday break, or it could be even sometime in spring break and in the summer and things like that. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, as, as a subscriber in that, in that, and in that offering, you're typically, you know, traveling, you know, during those times. And as a result of that, you know, that, that subscription, you're, you're, you know, you're paying for the travel as you book it. And so, um, you know, what we try and do is, is it, for that offering is, is have the, the technology, um, complement the level of service that you're getting and that, that our, our very talented customer service teams, the dedicated service teams that you have as a subscriber, you know, get to know who you are and where you like to go and, you know, the types of things that you're going to be interested in. And so we're, we're constantly, you know, reaching out and making sure you're, you know, you as a subscriber are aware of, of, you know, what might be coming up. If, you know, you had a trip booked next or last spring, maybe it's time to book that trip again. And, you know, we meet, we meet you kind of in, 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 in where you're most comfortable. If it's something that you just want to do on your own and you want that, you know, self-serve experience, you can do that on our website, you can do it on our app, and you can do that all by your, all on your own. Um, or you could be somebody that says, you know, hey, that sounds good to me. Can you just book that for me? And we can provide that that full service. Um, on the past side, it's it's very similar in terms of the, the service com uh, component paired with, you know, that complementary technology um, set of tools that we provide our subscribers. Um, but it, it with the way past it works a little bit differently 
Um, it's got a slightly higher price point in terms of the subscription, but then the travel is all, you know, included. So no, you know, the night there eights, taxes and fees are, are part of the subscription. So you're, as you're, as you're booking trips, you're not necessarily paying for those trips. You're, booking the trips you're taking them and then after that you're, you're booking another trip essentially so um you know we see folks and with that offering to to be a little bit more on the flexible side of things with their schedule they might be taking more trips they might be we, we see you know shorter booking windows um with with that type of offering um and and we find you know those customers have a uh you know some slightly different needs as it relates to our our club uh customers all all have a very similar profile and sort of the the expectations that they have, but in terms of sort of that scheduling and then sort of the booking window, it's a little different. So we see a lot of the, those trips being done, you know, fully self-service in terms of the booking. But again, the, you know, just to underscore the service component is really where, you know, the technology and that service meet to, to kind of provide that, um, those offerings so that, you know, our repeat customers have you know, the, the, the tools at their disposal to make those decisions quickly and easily. This is great. Would you say that for uh, the pass holders, the buying decision really becomes what is my next trip versus um, having to curate a specific option and plan, plan ahead? How is the mindset um, different in the, in the purchasing process? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I, you know, with, with pass, you know, just by the very nature of when you, when you book a trip, if you're a pass subscriber, you know, you're, you're not necessarily, you know, faced with as, as much of a buying, you know, decision as you would be when you book on the club side, or even, you know, if you're just booking, you know, if you're not an Inspirato member, you're booking like, you know, James mentioned a couple times on Airbnb or some of the other marketplaces, like, you know, when you're, you're faced with those decisions, you want to make sure you have as much information at your, at your disposal. On, on the past side, they're, they're still thinking through, you know, our subscribers are very much value focused, right? So yeah, they may not be paying for that, that trip as they're booking it. But you know, I, I like I'm sure at most folks on this on this, um, in this event would think about it. I mean, you're still like thinking about it in terms of value, like, well, if I have a subscription, you know, what am I what am I getting for this subscription? What am I booking? So you're kind of doing that, that math, if you will, a little bit, or at least doing some, some, some type of comparison. So um, we want to make sure that, you know, it's as, it's easy, as easy and as seamless as possible to book. Um, but you're, you're, you're right in that there's a, there is a slightly different mindset because you could, you could book that trip. And if, then ultimately on the past side, oh, you need to make a change and that trip doesn't work, you can cancel that trip, right? And you're, you're not necessarily losing out on, on anything per se. So there, there's more flexibility. There's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, I guess, transactions we see from like a booking and then making a rebooking perspective. And that's all by design because we want to provide that flexibility and, um, from both the service and the technology standpoint. Thank you, Sam. James, anything that you can share about the customers that use subscriptions or the uh, simplifications or improvements to customer experience that uh, you've observed from your experience with Stripe? Yeah, ab absolutely. Look, I think I would say most forward-thinking travel companies are asking themselves, you know, what's my Amazon Prime, right? What is that subscription offering that I could get into market that would you know, just reduce friction for people to come again and again, but also give a sense of belonging and, and nudge people to, to, to choose me over the competition. And I think we've heard two, two great examples today. Now, subscriptions have had pretty low penetration in travel. And I think we've always told ourselves, well, we have loyalty programs anyway, uh, like the big hotel programs, and perhaps travel's a relatively infrequent purchase. So it's not like shopping in a grocery store where I'm there every week, maybe only take one or two trips a year. But I hope that mindset is shifting now that, you know, it, yeah, I would recommend that every travel business pilots a subscription program as quick as as quick as they can, because actually you'd be really surprised that a number of small benefits complemented with probably like an elevated traveler experience. You know, you've got to make them feel a little bit special. It's not hard to do and it can yield huge results that, frankly, you probably would have spent on, you know, 
OTA commissions, travel agency commissions anyway. So you know you've got that kind of money to give away for people who choose you again and again. Um, We've recently supported one of the big hotel chains to launch Accor Plus, um, initially in in the Asia Pacific region. And for you know a small amount each year, you get a mix of instant and ongoing benefits. You know you can get a free night, you get uh, you always get a discount on your room, you get a discount on food and drink, which let's face it is higher margin, and people will probably end up kind of maybe eating the hotel and they wouldn't have done anyway. But they also nudge in this element of of status and this idea that actually. You know, hey, this 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 brand now will really recognise me. They'll 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 take better care of me, and I'll have better stays, and that's important to me when I'm with my family or when I'm with business colleagues or clients, and and so it's it's a really smart move, I think, towards first getting that repeat purchase, but then getting that ongoing share of wallet. Because why would I pick the hotel down the road when I've already committed spend to this this brand here? I'm not saying it's easy, you know, not not every segment wants this, but I think there's enough semi-frequent, frequent travelers that, that it is worth applying to some of your travel segments. I'd also say you need to find a way to make it sit alongside any core loyalty programs. I don't think you're going to be seeing people buying their way to platinum status because I think you do genuinely need a sense of earning that. But there's lots of perks, there's lots of benefits I think you can give. But the, but the key message really actually is, is around marketing. So step back from subscriptions. We've talked about that a lot. I think, you know, when someone has stayed with you, just make sure your tech is and your marketing team are, are, are jumping into gear around tailored email marketing, around when they traveled, why they traveled, how they travel. Have you learned those experiences? And I always say as a foundation, can they book exactly the same experience with you again in one or two clicks? You know, the same location, maybe same price point, same credit card. And if you can't, well, you've probably missed a really basic reason for repeat visits you know that people do return to the same hotel if it's near a client if it's near their office people do take flights at similar times of day people do park at the same airport so i think there's a really basic um kind of element of of personalization we're, we're missing and that's absolutely true in payments you know one of the things we see on the, on the stripe network we see millions of transactions every hour we see 90 we've seen 90 percent of the credit cards we see before so that's great because actually if a traveler has t- turned up again we've got a, a new product called stripe link where we remember them and with a simple code you're straight back in the system with all the details of how you like to pay all of your delivery d- addresses and all that kind of stuff so we can help every company feel like its customers are repeat customers and we do this with platforms like shopify and, and other big marketplaces outside the industry and it's really exciting to be able to bring that to travel where i know not everyone has the resources to obsess about loyalty, customer experience, marketing every day. But if we can borrow, you know, really simple off the shelf tech that some of these big marketplaces are using, you know, why wouldn't we reduce the friction for our guests, create that sense of belonging, belonging and giving them you know, nudges to repeat, repeat book with us again and again. This is great. Thank you, James. And I want to um, extend or ask a follow up question uh, around um post post purchase uh, which is exactly the example that you brought up with the restaurants and staying and uh, getting yeah. the additional discounts and status um, and a question is really to Sam uh, to talk about once the once the specific property is reserved and there's time before travel and during the trip how is your team supporting your customers and if there's any additional uh, services or any additional expenses that I incurred, how is this handled on the payment side? Yeah, yeah. So once once a trip is booked, that's really where the fun begins, right? Um, so, um, you know, we we have a, uh, you know, a very uh, uh, talented uh, customer service team that's, that's making sure that, and James, you kind of spoke to it as well as Ron, you did too, around, you know, ca- capturing and gathering all of this you know, you know, preferential data about customers so that we know, you know, who, you know, for our customers, who, who you are, obviously, but w- where are the types of places you like to go? And once you are traveling, what are the things you like to do, right? So you're somebody that's, you know, like to be very active and, you know, doing more of the various tours or activities or somebody like, yeah, the, 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 as little as possible, right? Just put me by a beach or pool and I'm good, right? And something somewhere in between. And so, we, we get all that information so that once you've booked that trip, we can really start to 
put together a very custom and 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 personalized itinerary for for you specifically for each of our customers and we have a, a dedicated trip planning team that does that and to you know kind of the combination of of the, the personalized reach out as well as the technology tools that that we can that we have at our disposal we can really make that that planning experience really exciting and just something that you know as a traveler you know leading up to the time where you're actually on that trip you you, you know you're you're really getting a, a great sense of you you're talking to an, an expert you're talking to somebody who knows that destination who knows that property and who knows like and can give you all of the recommendations sort of that insider feel right um and then once you're in the the property i mean we we can we provide all all all, all sorts of, of things that really we feel put us you know above and beyond and, and differentiate so all of the the planning services and you know things like you know kind of groceries having a, a place stocked with you know food and drinks that you want you know when you get there all of all of those services are, are part of the offering we provide so they're not like ancillary they get tacked on and then as as you're either building that itinerary before you book or even in in destination we have folks in the destination we have our dedicated concierges that are you know a, a text away or come check on you that can make sure you have what you need as a traveler and if you don't we can make sure that we can get that for you and sort of as you're as you're going through that process you know we want to make it simple and easy and so whether it's you know booking a tour or activity that you're interested in whether it's getting a a, a highly coveted restaurant recommendation whether it's maybe finding maybe an, an outlet for some some child care for an hour or two so you can go you know um you know maybe go on a uh an adventure or something like that we can we can do all that for you and, and ultimately anything that we may secure on your behalf you know ultimately gets added to your portfolio which then we can we can transact and process during the checkout um uh you know, at the end of the trip. But again, we try and make that as, as simple as possible so that, you know, you, the traveler, don't have to worry or think about anything while you're there. And then when it's time to, to, to you know, kind of wrap up your trip, you're going home, then that folio can be very simple. We have credit cards on file. We can charge it to that. We can split it across a couple of credit cards if you want. You can split it with some friends, things like that. Thank you, Sam. James, are there other similar examples where uh, multiple suppliers or multiple uh, parties get aggregated into a single folio from Stripe portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. And as a broader theme, I would say that if you aren't upselling during your traveler journey, you're being really neglectful. I think you're being neglectful to your team, you're being neglectful to your shareholders, and you're actually being really neglectful to your guests. I think if you don't bring them the best options they've got at each stage of their journey, you're missing a huge opportunity to enhance their stay, to make it more personal, to help them be more effective on their trip. Even before we start talking about um, you know, the money that you might make and, and the partnerships you might develop, I, I am still, I've always been really impressed by the innovators in upselling. So people like um, Oki out of Europe, Nor One now owned by Oracle, some of the property management systems like Muse and Cloudbeds, they're really starting to get it. But I'm still surprised at how few travel providers, hotels, vacation rental, that sounds like Inspirata have got the secret source, how few organizations have even taken the first, the first few steps. And, and I would start with permission. Guests want to be given valuable options. And if you get it wrong, if you show them something they're not interested in, that's fine as well. We're all customers. We know how to ignore stuff that's not relevant to them. But you need to be showing them the, the best places to park or how to get a transfer, like how to upgrade their stay, maybe with a, a better room or, or food, drink, spa, leisure, retail. Maybe they want to take a memento, a souvenir home. You know, have things ready for them in the room, like um, basic groceries or, or a bottle of wine. And then some really innovative stuff around moving their luggage around before they get there and, and, and this kind of stuff. Um, so one of the one of the and there's lots of ways to do it, by the way, you can do it with a partner. You can um, build it yourself with a simple kind of retail site like like Shopify or you can use kind of dedicated tools. Um, we're just in the process of helping Marriott through exactly this experience. So, so again, Marriott have always thought about rooms, revenues, driving that those direct bookings to their rooms. Obviously, COVID spung up. You know, hundreds of hotels doing completely different things around ordering by app or phoning ahead and trying to get contactless as quick as they can. 
so you know they're now putting putting their kind of marriott size effort around actually you know all of our restaurants should have a really great consistent guest experience that includes ordering ahead ordering in room ordering at the bar ordering at the pool um, and wouldn't it be great if you could connect that whole ecosystem using stripe behind the scenes so that exactly right you can add it to your folio you can learn about that guest over time you can realize what their trends might be over different sites and what's really exciting about it as a hotel franchisor, they can turn around to their owners and say, we're really helping you with this now. You're, you're making more money on this than ever before. So we're actually going to start charging a franchise fee over the food revenues that we influence as well. So again, great for guests, great for shareholders, great for hotel owners and their teams. It just seems like such a natural step that we wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't we be automating meetings and food and retail and 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 all of these kind of opportunities? So I, I'm really excited about capturing these revenues for the industry. And again, I think it's about piloting and trying things. And one of the things we're trying to do at Stripe is help each company figure out where its best opportunity is, and then and then just get going really quickly so we can have as fast an impact as possible. Thank you, James. And that makes a nice segue into the piloting and innovation and trying things and exploring and upgrading. And um, that's the, our last theme for today, the modernization and innovation and the role of technology in improving customer experience. Ron, uh, can you talk about the journey that the parking spots took in modernizing their techno your, your technology throughout the years? Oh, I've tried a lot of things, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, just to build off of Jane's point uh, and Sam's for that matter, is the personalization and the upselling. Um, we've actually seen pretty good success with uh, presenting our customers based on what we know, you know, that their preferences are um, to upsell them at time of booking and also after the fact to say, hey, you know, there may be a snowstorm coming. Are you sure you don't want to park in covered or are you sure you don't want your car valeted? Um, there may be, a, you know, a, dust storm coming in Arizona are you sure you don't want your uh, um, car washed while you're you know parked with us um, so it's like those ancillary services or the premium you know get dropped off first get picked up um, so yeah so we made we made use of a lot of the upselling and we you know we've got a pretty extensive data analytics department but from an overall technology perspective um, at the parking spot we effectively ripped and replaced every single system that we've had it was very very disconnected. Uh, when I first started working here uh, about 10 years ago. And we we just kind of threw everything out and just rebuilt uh, from scratch. It's our back end, our data architecture, our APIs. Um, and really the the products, and then the digital products came after that. So we never even had an app or a mobile website um, and our users are mobile. Um, so the thing that kind of brought it all together is, uh, and we partnered with data art throughout all of this development uh, for about, I think it's at least eight years now, Alex, maybe longer, <laughs> but um, we developed our uh, park system, the parking uh, access and revenue control system. So it's the gates, the cashier system, or cashier stations, the column unit. So it really is a point of sale system that was customized to us because we couldn't really find anything in the industry at the time. Um, <clears throat> so that, that system is kind of the middle of all of this technology. And quite frankly, it touches all of our customers, all of our employees, um, we're all dependent on it. It collects all of our revenue. So um, just from an innovation standpoint, we were the first um, that have done this. Um, you know, from a customization perspective, yes, there's companies out there that provide these systems, but uh, we truly customize it to all of our needs and we built it with that kind of platform in mind, um, not something that we were, you know, going to market to sell, we were using it for us. So I think we're right at the top of the hour, Alex. I don't know if you have Sam or James are giving some thoughts. Well, perhaps one. All right, one, maybe one, I'm moderating now. <laughs> perhaps one more question to James, and this is really um, a little bit of a forward facing. Uh, where, uh, in which areas does Stripe invest to enable better experience for travelers? What are the next things that are coming up? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess I guess two things we've really hit on a lot is is this idea of kind of local relevant payments. I think people pay and check out the way they want to pay. And then the second one we really hit on is this world of I suppose subscriptions and, and ancillaries. Something we haven't touched on, but I'm I'm now 
more passionate than I've ever been is this idea of ecosystems. And I think Sam really summed it up well with talking about these partnerships. What is your ecosystem, right? How are you thinking about, um, you know, putting in front of guests a whole range of options around their stay, around their trip? And then frankly, behind the scenes, how on earth are you going to manage that? Because I still see people sending out, you know, dumb invoices where you then have to log into a bank account and put in your bank details. Well, you should be sending out invoices with a, a Stripe link and someone just clicks and they pay you straight away. And then you upgrade to Connect, which is actually you could just move money with the click of a button through dashboards. And everyone's got the same view of the guests and how much money was spent and what fees are owed. And so we're moving into this world, I think, where we can start to build ecosystems, not just in our own businesses, but between, you know, OTAs, providers and suppliers and between different types of suppliers in the guest journey. And so the guest gets a great experience wherever they choose to enter that ecosystem. And we know that we can move money behind the scenes in you know, one click with one view, view of the truth safely and securely. So it's actually that financial backbone, that infrastructure for the travel industry um, that I'm really excited about Stripe playing a big part in. So it's a long way to go, but it's a, a good vision to have, I think. Thank you, James. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Sam, for joining me today. and allowing our guests today to get an, uh, an overview of your businesses and how the customer experience is structured in different processes, get a little bit of a better understanding of the payments workflows and how things are going beyond just payments and it really is about the customer experience. I hope you enjoyed our webinar today. Uh, if you do have any follow-up questions, to either our guests or data art, please do not hesitate to reach out. We'll have a slide shortly with uh, an email address that you can use to reach out to us. I want to thank you again to, for spending an hour with us today and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.